Well, we are really excited to be here because we're about six weeks away from the opening of Gallery One. And um, so we are all, while here, been constantly working, as you can imagine. Um, and we're going to give you a little preview into the space and the 10 interactives. And I have uh, Seema Rao, um, Director of Intergenerational Learning. Learning. Oh. <laughs> and um, the major, major force of the content for this whole project. And um, Andrea Bohr works in IMTS with me, and she is the analytics person for all the back end part of the data going to these systems. And I'm Jane Alexander, um, director of IMTS. So um, Seema, why don't you start us off? Absolutely. So welcome. I'm, we're going to churn through this presentation because there's so much to look at, but in part because then we want to hear your feedback at the end. So I, we, we have phones. We can check Twitter. You can tweet us questions. You can yell them out if you don't remember anything. Part of the thing about this space is that it has its own language. <laughs> so we're going to try to kind of give you that vocabulary so you can hear it. And then if you totally forget that language, just ask us, and we'll tell you again. Um, we took two years to learn that language. So if it helps you, um, it's hard. So there's a lot going on. And so, I just, uh, just not to, but um, yeah, we, we edited a lot out <laughs> so because we can't show you every, every interactive. But we're going to have to zoom through most of them because we couldn't bear not to show you a glimpse of something because it's just we're just so excited about it so so we are in Cleveland in the midst of a multi-year renovation we announced our renovation on September 11 2001 and we will be finished on December 31st 2013 we demolished uh, two buildings we renovated two historical buildings we added exhibition halls. And in the midst of this, the, um, the, du the, the director, actually, m many years ago now, said, you know what, there's a great exhibition hall right at the front door of our institution. That would be a great place for education, curatorial, in, uh, at that time, new media, what is now IMTS, to work together to create a space that brings visitors in. And so this space is right at the front door. Um, you might not all know the Cleveland Museum of Art, but we have um, the main entrance, which is off of a university campus. We're gonna, is the math right next? Oh, yeah, it's after the beacon. Okay. So I'll just, well. There's a little look into the space. Can we go to the map and come back to that? Yeah. Cool. So the main entrance, um, you walk in the front door, and we have a hall that is larger than our exhibition hall. And it is a space where we took art out of our permanent collection galleries, put it in there with interactives that we developed, created a small space for families to play together, have a space where we can um, interpret art from our collection in really engaging ways, and it's for free for our visitors. And we all di we did this as a huge museum team. There's almost no department in our institution that was not involved in some way in this project. So let me let you kind of see inside, and we can go, there we go. Here's a good sort of sense of it. This is when you first walk in the door. So you've walked in the door of our institution, you go through this glass wall that you just saw, and you see this. Hopefully. <laughs> oh. Ah, sorry. Well, you can imagine. Um, what you'll see is, there you go. Is it going to play for us? Oh, my trail. It's a, it's a large, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> it's a large wall um, that is Christy Micro Tiles, and it displays, it's, it's sort of this oh, yeah. digital welcome to our space. And there you can see, it gives you some of the features of this, and our goal was that visitors see art in a new way. We've been working with local projects. They came on the project in September 2010. And they really worked with us because we said, visitors have all these questions. We've done extensive front end evaluations. We know what they're really interested in. How can we get them to appreciate our collection and come back, and come back as many times as they can and become lifelong visitors? And they said, why don't we create lenses onto your collection? So the first thing that we did was develop these very large touch screens, which you'll see later, called lenses. Why don't you connect this space to the rest of the museum? And so we have an app called Art Lens. Why don't you put them in control of looking and sorting through your collection? So that's called the collections wall. And then why don't you cater to families? And this is called Studio Play. It's one of the subsidiary spaces. We put it right at the front because we did a lot of front end evaluation and families wanted to be near the entrance and the bathrooms. And so it's very near both of those spaces. Um, and you can see the other thing we did about it was Families said to us, we don't want to be hidden. 
We want to do things and we want people to know that you like families. And so you can see there's a big glass wall. It helps that our, um, our director of architecture and design has a young family himself. Um, but we have a big glass wall and we want people to see it. And within that space, there's two other interactives, which we probably won't touch on right now. But there's one that you can see just behind. There's a sculpture, a sculpture sort of smiling at you that's ceramic. Behind it, there's two um, tables, and they're touch screens. And it's a game where we support early visual and verbal literacy through sorting our collection and playing this sort of matching game. And then in that space, also, we have a line interactive, which we actually will talk about, and where kids can be creative, and then it connects them and supports looking at the collection, sorting through the collection. So this, this is kind beacon. of, right. This is, so as uh, Simi said, the first interactive is, be, is our beacon, which is um, access signage, but it's uh, sort of a five minute loop highlighting um, some of the interactives, but it also has dynamic information um, that's just giving you a it's part of the scale. It's uh, 16 by 9 LED screens. And um, what we wanted to do is that we wanted to give you an introduction so when you saw the space, you would see the actual art. And this is some of our top art of our collection. But that it was an interactive space. So um, it shows like our app that we have a scan function that any um, 2D uh, dimensional object in our collection in um, Gallery 1, you can lift your iPad up and hotspots will pop up and then you can see the content and you can favorite it right from your iPad. You can also favorite from the wall, we'll show you that. But then also the beacon will show the current top 10 favorite objects. Um, we also have different interactives. We'll, t um, Tim we'll talk a little bit about the different lenses, but one of them, we wanted to, um, when you play the games, be able to send them to Facebook, send them to Twitter, but also, as you can see, a strip of how you've matched this interactive will go to the wall. So you can see who's currently playing the game. Um, we also have um, people creating their own tours, and those tours will come up too. Um, and we built this so that we can add to seeing on what kind of dynamic information will be interesting to the public, we will add to the beacon as the space grows. So we're an institution that has one of the largest repeat visitorships uh, in the country. So we have we're not we we are very close to the Cleveland Clinic, which is a is, which is a enormous medical complex that actually has a lot of medical tourism. So we do get some tourism from that, but we have just a lot of people who grew up in Cleveland who came to the Cleveland Museum of Art and who keep wanting to come there. And s then we have those medical tourists or the people, we have a very divided city, so there's a lot of communities who think we're in a very unsafe community, and so they don't come. They come once a year on a school bus. And then we have a few people, a small population that comes from the region who drives in for a special exhibition. We were given the charge to come up with something that everyone would like. Has anybody had that challenge? You can't meet it, right? You can't go like, I can't do everything. And so what we decided was that what we could do is meet some of those challenges. And I, I think that's an important lesson in general, like accept what you can't do. And then accept the good things that happen too. So what we did do for those repeat visitors is that um, we looked at our collection you know, across the board and thought, what are some of the things that people love? And how can we create groupings around those themes and those works? And we have 14 installations of art. And these come from our permanent collection galleries. There was a joke in my office that I was like a pirate. Um, we have a, an interpretation steering committee, so we plan galleries. Um, we, we do everything in a group, I have to say, at the Cleveland Museum of Art. So we plan them, curatorial design um, and education come together to talk about gallery installations. And so you know, a curator said to me, I just feel so bad. There's just no space for this work in my gallery. And I said, oh, that's just awful. Can I help you out? Um, and, and it really did, it was actually, it was wonderful because they had ownership of our space and we had some of the best works from our collection. And so um, to go back a little bit, some of the topics that we went with, what we did was like, you know, the gal our galleries are chronological. We said, okay, we're gonna do these thematically. So this one is sculpture. The one on the left is a Japanese sculpture from the 500s. The one on the far right is a Rodin bronze and in the middle there's an African sculpture. And then we change it up. So every, every one of these 14 installations is led by a question, and they're completely different. The thing that is the same, and this was like one of those childhood games, what's the same and what's different? The thing is the same. They all have a question. They all have works from across our institution. And then we have an interactive that helps you answer those questions. 
the questions themselves are quite different. So the one before was, um, how do our bodies, ex how are our bodies expressed in art perhaps? What do we end up with? How do our bodies inspire art? This one is, what was the world like then? And this is actually America in the 1930s. And then we went with what, what are, you know, what are stories? Stories, we've, I, you know, I've heard in many sessions, stories are so important to visitors. And so here are three works. The one in the middle is one of our best known um, Christian works, the Adam and Eve mosaic. And this one actually you'll see in a second, and I, I want to warn you, there's also, uh, um, there's a tap, large scale tapestry that is perpendicular to this. And then finally, painting. So these are four samples of that. You walk up into this room and the art, it's like somebody took the museum and just shook it up and mixed it up. And to make, have visitors make sense of that, they can go up to these touch screens. They're 14 feet away from the art. One thing that was very important to the educators and curators is that people could do this unmediated. Just look at the art. Or they could use the technology. And so each technology, each lens has three major components. So to go back to those audiences we were talking about, there are people who want to know everything about every work because they've come here for 45 years. And so we have something called Look Closer, and we'll, we'll show you a video in a second. And that basically lets you go in depth on Actually, something. Some, oh, so we have some slides, slides so you can show it. Then for people who really just don't, you know, they don't know where those things came from. They have no idea what that's about. We have this, which is context. The, we'll put the, the work into context for you. And the context, we're using the word context broadly. So sometimes it is where it originally was. Sometimes it's where it's been exhibited. Um, but we have some sort of context. And then finally, a lot of our visitors of all ages, and I, and, and I really want to be clear, we have a large senior population, and they too are playful. They want to play. And so then we have games that actually express um, interpretation that we hoped people would get. And we were kind of careful. We knew there's certain kinds of interpretation you just can't do in a game. And so those went into look closer or context. So I'll turn it over to Jane to talk more about the games and these yeah. aspects. <laughs> just, you just Can I ask you a quick question? Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so you said that, that, that you had a group of people that met mm -hmm. and you said curatorial. Mm -hmm. um, curatorial technology and design so, and so, education. So do you incorporate the visitor services folks into that conversation? Yeah, that's a great well? question. Yeah. That's a great question. So we did actually we worked very closely with the woman who's our head of communications. She's also, we have an in-house audience evaluator. but. Prior to her arrival, we worked with Mariana Adams of Audience Focus. Um, we're really indebted to her. She did a lot of our front end evaluations. And at that, she trained a lot of our staff to do it and to observe, because one of the things for me that's been most useful is to hear people playing our technology. It's really helped me feel like, OK, I'm working for you. I understand what you're saying. Because having that raw feedback has been very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this one's nice and long, so you so, guys can yeah. talk. <laughs> this, this is, I mean, this is showing context. Every single object in the um, gallery one has this, you can touch it and get all this information about it. And because we have repeat visitors, we want you to come to a lens and not even get nearly through it. In addition to all these hotspots and information and videos about the actual object, and, and um, we have three of our lenses where there's you can pan over, like um, Asima was saying in the stories, you can pan over to um, tapestry. You um, can then get information about that. But in addition, we made interactive games to go with each question so that students would and, and people would be able to um, have, a, have a new tool set to go out into the galleries and look at art differently because one of the things is you have all these people that love coming to the museum, they're very intelligent, but they might not have an art history degree and except for reading the tombstone, what else do you do? So this, a lot part of these games gave people another way to look at art. So we're gonna show you a couple of those games. And one is talking about the staying with the sculpture was strike a pose. And uh, this gives you a little idea. Um, this is uh, Keely from Local Projects. She's the project manager. Um, and so what you do in this, as you can see, is you find a sculpture in our collection, you want to make pose, and then you try to imitate it, and it will rank your accuracy, and then you hold it, and then you can Facebook it, Twitter it, email it, and it can go, um, this, actually, this one's not going to our wall, we're using the, the next one, expression, to go to our wall, but that could go to the wall if you decide that was fun. This we have found a lot of people, fam 
Another thing that um, education wanted was that the lens become like a family would work together. So we have noticed that people, when they come to test this out, everyone's cheering for each other and getting excited, but also looking at how the sculpture is really, I mean, you look at sculpture totally different than you have. I know I do now. Um, oops, I keep going the wrong way, sorry. Um, so then here's expression. This is also Miriam from Local Project. She's a editor. And this is the opposite. You make a face. And then it looks in our collection for a face similar. So um, this, actually this is a good one. I found a really good one there. And then it takes your photo. And then you can decide of all this, this streaming, you can delete which ones you don't want to send and which ones you want to send. And, um, and it's fun to find where you match. Um, I always get this really unattractive male Stern face and get it every single time. <laughs> Try smiling. Even when I smile, I'm like, I get the same guy. So, um, and that's showing the social media concept of it. So, um, so that's at local projects has been spending a lot of time in the back end making more and more faces to make that more accurate because right. they also have had the problem of always getting the same, you know, guy with the hat. Or right. All oh, right. Kelly does that too. Miriam does it. The woman we just showed on film, she gets a great, great range of. Faces, so maybe you have to wear your hair up. Um, <laughs> no, actually, but Tom Barnard, someone, a designer in our uh, at the museum, he also gets a range of great faces that match. So through all these interactions, are you, are you capturing people's like email? I mean, how are you? What are you getting? You know, are you getting data on the back, back end? Yeah, on the back end for um, what we have, we're working with the dynamics for the beacon and where we're going to keep the information. But yes, we'll have people's email we don't want people giving you know having to have to sign in and give too sure. much information but yes we'll have your email at the very least and what you've been and we all and we're going to get a lot of metrics on what people are playing and where is it going and what's going out and that's that sort of use of what games are how highly used are they and what people save stuff and what people want to send stuff and and just the very very basic seeing people's favorite objects I think is going to be really fun to see how that grows over time um, and also a lot of these games that we're not even going to show you, this is why do we paint, but we have, um, we show paintings from our collection and we ask you why do you, th you think this was painted and you choose from a bunch of reasons and you just seeing where people ranked on that choice is fun compared to sort of the description of probably why it was painted. Um, this is one of our ones called Make Your Mark and um, about the different styles and you select a style that you want to paint in, and then you select a color. This is an old one that has the styles. And then it will let you paint in that. Um, so you will learn about the difference between drip and um, abstract, gesture, and pour. Um, and the nice thing about all these interactives is they are, they keep, Local Projects keeps adding through education finding more and more examples, so the lenses become richer. I mean, every time I go back, I learn something else from different styles. This is just Tempera. This is also another game. We have five games on the painting one, and I just like this one. This one, it, we, we took this out, but it shows exactly all the layers, and there's a video, a process video that goes along with it, but you just, by sliding it, you see all the layers to making a Tempera painting. Um, this is the Tell a Story that um, um, they took the Perseus tapestry and they broke it up into all the parts that's going on. And for me, again, this was really exciting, interactive to work on because I never really looked at this huge tapestry that way and that this whole story is being told. So the, the uh, interactive is you have a choice of making a comic book or making a movie. You take all the scenes, you put it in the order that you want, you add bubble speech to it, you can also make your own, and then you can email your your comic book or watch your movie that you made. So that space, that large space, has all of these interactives, and in that space we really hoped to help visitors, train visitors. It's kind of this microcosm. It, it's really great because we have different rules than the rest of the curators. I know they come and say, I can't believe you're allowed to do that. And I say, I know. Um, so we, we can do things like put these interactives in. We can play with things virtually and put works together. A, a number of our curators have said, I wished I could put that in my galleries because we have different rules outside of our four walls. I'm going backwards just because um, I want to show the one thing I wanted to show is 
The size of the lens, we spoke up for a long time because it was real. One of the things that when we were trying to figure out how will people do interactives at the same time still look at the art. And you know, once you get kids involved on screens, are they really going to go back and look at the art? And um, it's purposely lowered. This one has this a little bubble because we have a connect camera with it, and a, um, but the other ones have nothing above it. And you can look directly at the collection of art. And before you start, it always has that. It looks like you're looking through the screen because the image, the photos, are exactly of what you're looking at. Um, I don't know if we have that right here. So, so if you've had this experience and you've you know gone in this gallery and you have this technology, what next? And I think one of the challenges we were faced with was, and the um, deputy director of collections and programs was particular was particularly con concerned with this or hoped that we could do this. It has to resonate with the rest of the collection. You know, it can't just be by itself. And it is at the front door. We have a large atrium in between this and the rest of the galleries. It could be by itself. But you need to, he wanted to make sure that it was not just pushing people in the galleries, but actually pushing people back into the space and having kind of this wonderful um, equilibrium with the space for our visitors. And so we did this in a number of ways. In each of those interactives, we had a number of works that you could, you could learn about something, but then you could actually then connect to work. So that if you go back to the painting lens, um, only the painting on the right, if we get there for a second. Okay, so the painting that's in the middle is actually installed in the space, and then the one on either side are upstairs in the permanent collection galleries. So we wanted to kind of um, subliminally say there's other works in our collection, but then in a bigger way, we, in the space right outside of where all these interactives are, there's a large room that we could call the collections lounge. And in that, we have the collections wall. So you've gone in, you see real art, you play with lenses perhaps, um, and then you go into this large room and there's a 40 foot interactive wall. And our hope is that this is sort of the, the interstices between what you've just done and the galleries that you're going into. And it, you can sort everything, you can be in control. Yeah. Um and it's this wall is a 40 foot micro tile wall so it doesn't matter this actually um, leads you right into our atrium which has a lot of light and um, it's brilliant the collection looks brilliant the worst part about showing you this is you don't see how gorgeous the objects look on the wall but we've um, there'll be couches and chairs so you can actually just watch the wall because every 30 seconds it has everything on view and then it goes to a theme curated theme based on media, could be based on collection, but then it could be something fun like funny hats or um, cats or I just have to <laughs> cats say that. So, so you're exposing stuff that's not on view as well. Um, we we sort of made the decision that it would be only everything on view. Okay. But we are now in making these curated views, realizing that we are pulling from things that are not on view, and we're just marking on the wall that this is not on view. The, and if it I can comment on the reason challenge. as to yeah. why why it's not everything that's on view is because, as everybody knows, it's almost impossible to get that level of photography of your entire collection. So we could not guarantee the developers that we could we can actually get everything through photography in a year. You know, forty five thousand objects while they're trying to do installations was not going to happen so everything that is on view is guaranteed to have a absolutely gorgeous fully expandable image um, a very high res photography and then anything else that they choose to curate in based on it being a lovely image and fitting in with the theme well then um, we can accommodate that too so how did you so I'm curious about how you tied this into your registration workflow yep your yes workflow. I mean we had to work very close we've we've been working extremely closely with the collection management team that is the registrar photography that's all one department and um, everything on view she when they about this project had to be um, photograph by December, and plus we're going through, as Seema told you, a uh, ex uh, renovation of the entire museum. So galleries aren't even open that are going to be on view in December, that we have collection work that is on the wall that's being interpreted. So working around all that, and so going outside the processes, everyone has to be open to how are we going to do this a little differently. Um, and then Andrea, working with our um, digital asset management system and our collection management system. We currently are 
building a new collection management system, but that won't be done now till the spring because we ended up putting all our resources on this. We've had, we also have a CMS that runs all that, that reads from our digital asset management system, but we wanted everything to be dynamic. So we have a couple of fake runarounds, especially for stuff that's not gonna come on view till December, but then we want that to become dynamic. We do not wanna be, when something goes off view for whatever reason, for conservation, for loan, we don't want to have to think about it. It automatically, automatically. Yeah. goes off our iPad, goes up, which we haven't even gotten to, but our collection wall and our iPad work together and everything on view is on the iPad. And then we have some special works that are in Gallery One that, um, I mean, from, a, from our group having to find creative ways to pretend they're accessioned without you know, work with the collection management registrar who's, you know, is precise that everything in that system is exactly the right way. I mean, we've been, that's, it's actually been crazy, but creative, it's been kind of fun. Like, how do we make this work and do this? And so when it does become real, how do we go there? And so that's all so that. The same CMS that's driving your, the wall is also driving the iPad out. Yeah, we yes. always, we're, we're looking for one system because no one wants to be updating. The, the, only, yes. the only one that's on its own are the interactive systems. And right now, our um, our current collection management system, pull, our, our digital asset management system pulls from our collection management system and then goes to the CMS. And the person who did our digital asset management system wrote the CMS. So there's kind of stuff. And then we're, as we're building this new CCMS, we're tying the digital asset management into that, so it's all a really clean system. And we're talking about that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> but this, this wall, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it is absolutely brilliant to look at. So every 30 seconds, um, this is showing, you can touch any object on the wall. It was designed so that up close, you can, um, by swiping it, you can see everything in the collection. Um, this is all changing, right? As you see all those like um, typos, things up there, that was because it was behind, us, behind the scenes pulling from our collection management system. And now we're cleaning so that up. And how do we make that work without messing up everything else? Um, and if you want to have long talks about with that, Andrea afterwards would love to tell you about that. <laughs> But um, she'll break out into hives. But we yeah. this wall, you sit back. We wanted so so we have couches and stuff, so you can sit and watch it at the same time. Um, we want you to be able to explore the work. So through media, or through the um, collection or the department, you can then pick an area. So you could start with impressionism and end up in African art, and that's sort of the idea: is that you see our collection in many different ways. Um, and then, then you see these pedestals along the floor, one's lit up. We're all our iPads, we're going to have iPads to um, rent out for $5. Um, but we also encourage you to bring your own iPad and we will give you a little sticker with an RFDI reader. And um, you, just, you just lay that um, iPad right on the pedestal. It's like a wireless reader. And then anything you're looking at, you can just drag right there. There's these little circles. You can't really see them well, this square. Oh, you can drag it right, right in and it will, pop into your favorites so you can make a playlist and then um, I'll let Seema talk a little about the iPad, how that would go from there. But um, yeah, the whole idea is that this wall then shoots you out. You now have like the tool set from all the interactives that we didn't even get to in the gallery one. You have this wall and now you go into our galleries with this new iPad. Oh, this is just how many visitors do you think can use the wall at once? We did so. We looked at the size of the wall. We have eight pedestals because you just you don't have to click the iPad in. You just have to drop it, and you can save it. And if the person next to your your sister next to you, she just has to drop. If she had her own iPad, drops right. it in there. But we set it up for about 16 when we looked at the load of the system and wall, just because the amount of people that would probably be at a 40 foot would be about 16. But we could have 20 after that. We you know you have to balance speed and everything and so yeah. so after that it would probably cr we, you know crash if we went more than that but we're, we're playing with we are having it December 12th we're helping a soft opening everything's going to be done right. and then we're using the next five weeks to have um, to test it every aspect of how to um, how does all the software work how are people using it how many people should be in the space with all this art and people walking around with iPads? How many people really go to the wall? Do we have to ticket at this so that there's, all, you know, even though it's a free ticket, should only right. 40 people be in the space at a time? We don't really know because no one's really done this. And that's so everybody's going to be sort of getting their question. We all have made some guesses, but I think we're just going to really be in total communication. Open for that flexibility. Well, and it sounds like your culture is 
open to letting you experiment. Right. Yes. I think it's yes. really yes. important. Yes. We've broken them We've down. broken them down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like the last person standing from the beginning of this project. We've I want, broken I want them to make down. Sure you guys did um, yeah, there's a whole so lot of questions. So I, let, I, I don't know who started. Seema, but wait, can we get yeah. through? Just run right through the iPad and then. Oh yeah. Question. So why don't we do that? Can you can I find any one of us so afterwards. So yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a good idea. Um, but to just recap before we go to iPad. So you st you walk into the space. There's that digital sort of display that we call the beacon. Then you go into this room that we've broken all the rules, which we call Gallery One, that have the lenses. Then you get to the collections wall, and that's a place where we really wanted people to get lost in the collection. All of this space that I just talked about is Gallery One. Of course, we have a huge museum outside of that, and so um, the interpretation that occurs in the rest of the gallery, so the interpretation that happens in Gallery One, the writing and the content comes out of Inter intergenerational learning, the one that comes out from outside of our sort of four walls is interpretation. So the director of interpretation, Jennifer Foley, and her team have worked with curators for a very long time to develop content. Men much of it is audio, um, some of it is video. We worked with local artists. Um, we really wanted, we we're right next to the Cleveland Institute of Art, so we wanted to make sure to connect to that community. And we created videos in their studios. And then we wanted to take visitors into the galleries. So if you think about the collections wall as getting lost, I like to think of the iPad as getting found. So you take it and it has a number of features that help you do that. You could take a tour. And the tour could be something that we have curated, and we, you know, can walk you through. We have, we will have four wings when we do our final open uh, this December. We will have two fully open buildings, and so you could do that. You could instead get to a room and say, "I have no idea what this is," and then you can pick up your iPad and scan the artwork, and then it will give you some information. It might give you just. Um, a small label, an extended label from what you see on the wall. It could give you hot spots, and so you could see you know, three things about it. Or it could give you more video, so the, the audio and video that I mentioned would come up that way. You could also say, and this happens to us a lot because we've been in renovation for so long, you could also say, I have no idea where I am in this building. It is a question I hear basically every day at work. Especially the new renovate, I mean this Absolutely. is Beautiful. I really recommend everyone coming. And like the art, any of the art museum, oh, good. And any of the art museum people, you would probably have a number of rooms that have no windows, so they have sort of no frame of reference. So near you now is an important function for us. Um, and one of the things when you're talking, someone came in and talking how they were working now all on the infrastructure to get the aspect of um, location finding and wayfinding, especially with the another um, part of the. App, which is near you now, which let um, Seema explain about, but was we had to make sure we got all our infrastructure in. So we um, looked at different ways to do wayfinding. We ended up going with a hosted solution um, with Navazon, and uh, we uh, to get um, accuracy within 10 meters, we uh, put probably more uh, nodes in triangular. Uh, triangular fashion that um, for each gallery than we normally would have had. We've also amped up the Wi-Fi so that um, when you play the videos, they will play quickly. We're still in the test, I mean, while we're doing all this, we're testing that, realizing we have to add more there. We're currently, right now, there was probably about 20 back and forth with Amazon, the developer, and our um, technical director right now fixing that um, the last two days. And so near you now is basically our goal, and this is this is an important part of working together. We have goals as educators and curators and design that involve visit. You know, we did a lot of visitor experience um, test. We sorry did a lot of visitor evaluation, and people said some people said I don't want to be lost in your building. I want a tour, but a lot of people said I want to get lost. And so we had to come up with a way that this app could both be linear and be as self-serve, uh, you know, exploratory as possible. So that was our goal. And then we said to them, make it happen. Here's like 150, 100,000 videos. Here's this many audios. Here's this many objects. Go. And so, Andres, I think you're going to talk a little bit about back end at this point. Right? Oh, I can, unless I would bore anybody to death. No, but go. I think the, so then and Andrea yeah. worked with us because we had so much content. We're producing all of the content that we've talked about up to this point at the same time, kind of in these crazy running trains. 
So, uh, like I said earlier, all the content that's used in the lenses, those are all hard-coded. But uh, when you talk about the iPad and whatever comes out for the collection on the beacon and anything that's coming out on the collections wall, that is all being fed automatically from our cataloging system into our dam, uh, into another iteration of our dam, and finally into this um, CMS, which has been custom developed over the last six months to manage it. So basically the entire collection body of artwork records comes in, um, and in this final CMS is where we've been loading all the content they've been creating. Um, that's been a learning lesson for all of us. First of all, we aren't, we haven't really produced videos. We do have an in-house uh, AV house uh, shop, but to be able to produce them at this scale, I mean, we're talking about a lot of video. Uh, we've ha we've contracted some of the work out. We've done some of it in-house, but just getting things like aspect ratios down, um, making sure that it works on the platform, making sure that these vid videos are rendered. There's been a lot of ingest. Oh my goodness, re-ingest. Um, fix it, little things wrong with it. So that from the from the content management side, uh, I think we're having a lot of lessons learned. I think it's going gonna go, we have another batch due that we're gonna be loading, I think in the next three months of content for another set of galleries. And that should go a lot more quickly. Um, they're we're just, just learning, seem, just we're just learning. learning. The, the amount of derivatives right. needed. So each, uh, each artwork <laughs> in the iPad has 23 thumbnail de derivatives. Um, of different sizes for different places that it either shows up on the wall or the um, the app, and those were all generated automatically. But there's obviously issues when you do that with algorithms because some things are this way and some things are this way. Um, some things are very large, <laughs> and they don't thumbnail down very well. On top of that, they've done a lot of custom cropping for all the videos. So if the video relates to a very specific part of the work of art, we've had to go and find that particular crop. Um, and we've had some, we've hired some people to do that kind of work for us too. You can probably show it. You might have to. What happened then? It's once you hit enter over there. Enter. So Andrew, you said you went from the, your collections management system to dam to another middleware dam, and then. Well, we have so one middleware dam <laughs> simply because of the collections online. So we have what we can. We our dam is everything that okay. is in our collections management system, which is obviously not everything that you can publish to the, to right. the public. Right. So we that middle that middleware dam is we call it DMZ, that's collections online and that's what we, we serve up the yeah. iPad and the collections wall as well because we know this and is completely through, public content. And we just went through um, our web we we're changing our whole back end to um, Drupal but we're redesigning our whole collection um, how people use the collection. So we've learned a lot of lessons there already and working with <laughs> Our digital asset management group. So when we went to this, we just we kind of already knew certain things and certain rules we had to apply to get there. So, um, but we still have learned. I mean, at, at, I mean, it wasn't until we got all the content in that you realized, oh my God, we need another derivative. Oh my God, this isn't. We have to can't you can't do it when you have this. Or what do you do when you have that? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking at the numbers right now. We have 3,200 secondary work. assets for that app. That being okay. things that the primary assets being the main artwork image and all its 23 derivatives, um, 3,200 3, videos, still images, content we've either begged, borrowed, or begged, borrowed, or I paid for. I have not for. stolen any. <laughs> <laughs> the, rights to, the rights to use um, mm -hmm. as, as comparative images, as rich content. Um, managing those, obviously, that's also outside of our collections management system, which is why we had to had to put it at the CMS together because we can't pull every bit of content out of our collections management system when they're going and doing research into other collections and things like that. So, um, to keeping you those as standard format, you, you know, I just plugged plug and played. So before. I think before we take questions, yeah. I would have a couple. I just wanted to sort of summarize that while they're trying to figure this out, this project. Um, this project over the last two years has meant that every, basically every department in our institution has been involved. And it has involved a lot of project management, it's involved a lot of communications within our department, outside of our department, and a lot of cooperation. And if nothing else, it's really been trial like fire. So we've already talked about the question, somebody um, uh, tweeted a question, how long is this supposed to last? And we actually, we, we had scaled it probably for two years, maybe three years. We know we're going to change it. And while if you told me that 
in 2010, I might have hit you. Now I'm really excited. I mean, I've just already had meetings thinking about which, you know, our curators are really excited now to have their works in this installation. And we're already thinking about new iterations. You know, we, we really, we, it's really changed the way we've thought about this kind of collaborative work. And the technology doesn't seem scary. I mean, you throw anything at us at this point, we'd be like, all right, sure. That's going to change? Great. I mean, I also think it depends on the interactive we're looking at. All the lenses is a, you know, is a two-year to three-year change. Out. Although it's been built with so much content, we figure that it's a, there's enough to get you through it. But then with the interactives in the um, creative place, in Studio Play, which was the line and shape, which we didn't show you, that is um, you draw a line, and it finds an, an object in our collection. And that also is on our microtile wall. And that was sort of when um, young kids go out into the museum and see they'll see the line that they drew. They'll see, they'll recognize the part of the collection. Um, that we can continuously add, you know, we're working on the technology to make it even more perfected, although it's pretty neat. And, and I, I wish I showed you that video also. But, um, it, but we can also add more objects to it. Um, same with um, the beacon that like initially in the next six months will change what in, what um, dynamic information do we want to pull to that. We just, right now, we're just kind of going with it and seeing where it's going. And the wall, we we constantly, we're, every time people start talking what we should do next, it's like we're just building this now and this is what we're doing and we're going to see how it works. Because when you go through those cover flows, you know, that's another thing working with, with our current um, collection management system how that every object will get you enough information to get another set of cover flows. That's been a that's been a huge you know thinking project for us with the information we have. As um, curators are getting more excited, as Seema said, now people want to be like they want to be the next sort of um, you know conservation wants to have a section in there, and mm -hmm. so with that, people will start putting more content, and then we can then and clearing you know if every curator went through all their objects our database system will, you know, be able to show a lot more information. So the so. tool itself is a motivator for your own. That's Absolutely. what, that's really. what we feel well, like it's yeah. really going to push each, I mean, we, we're really excited from um, the data side. We're all very excited. I yeah, absolutely. And I think before I take questions, I think the sort oh, of final yeah. conclusion is that what, we, what we've created is a framework. We've created a framework on how we work together. We've created a framework on how we think about art. We've created a framework on how we interpret art through technology in our space. And we've also created a framework on how we let visitors impact that, because this all came out of visitor evaluation. And so, and it'll continue to, because we'll take metrics on which tours are the most popular, which which apps are you, which part of the app is used more often, which part of the wall is used more often, which lenses are used more often. So within this framework, we hope to continue to change and expand based on the foundation that we've created. Right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so questions. <laughs> I don't know who. Scream. No, how about in the back? He was holding his hand up forever. So, um, I have a couple of questions. Uh -huh. So, um, local projects was an initial help to initiate mm -hmm. No, no. So we 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 initiated this internally, and then we did an RFP, and the local projects bid on it. And then when local projects came on, we had some we had some ideas. We talked about all these sort of questions. Questions is something that came up quite often, and they said and we had we knew we wanted these thematic groupings, and they said, well, you have these thematic groupings. I I think that you should think about sort of lenses onto your collection. Right, and it's an ongoing relationship. Or is it something that they kind of started you up and then you continue it Well, everything we're building is, I mean, that's one, except for the lenses, which um, initially we were going to template those, but because the collections were so different and we were trying, we didn't know where we wanted to go, those are pretty hard coded and those, um, we can't, you would ha we have to redo them with the new, next set. Everything else we've built to take over internally and expand, that's why our, the, um, there's about five people on the um, technology team that's been working directly with their tech. They have seven. They have a developer. They have two developers for some objects, um, but they have nine developers in total working on this project. So that working with our systems, so that we take it over, we're able to manipulate it based on what the museum wants to do. And so within the museum staff, uh, other people dedicated to this project. At um, some point. Like well, I think that that's, that's a great and very challenging Nobody's question. Nobody's full time. Nobody is. Nobody is um, well, Patty Edmondson is. Okay. So there's, we have a we have uh, one. It's really labor intensive. 
it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, no, a lot of, but a lot of it's there's been... one only one person whose job like this is the only basically the only thing in their job description, and it's the, from the content side actually. So I I run a department. Jane runs a department. Andre has other responsibilities with our collections management. So there's no there's this this project's been a labor of love for a number of people. Um, from the director of education and interpretation, the the, cu- the chief curator, there's just a number of people who've put in kind of beyond their job. But we, we think that it's not, like, as we get more ideas, it's not going to be the same. I mean, when you create content, yeah. it always is. But from our side, we feel like we'll have the bones in there just to manipulate it. It won't be like now where we're starting from scratch. And yeah. currently, as I said, we're rebuilding our collection calling management system. We're doing our whole collection online system differently and we're doing that at the same time building this so that we're thinking okay how do we do this so in the future this all works together so it's just a lot more work now for us and also what people want even when we looked at the iPad I mean what we've decided to do and it's super rich with content and I just I mean we have a prototype that people want to look play around with it but um, even where that's going I know everybody has ideas already because it was sort of like we had to we had to put down something and get going, and it, and everyone was a perfectionist and passionate about it, but it's been set up to go to easily go to the next place. The hardest part will be the ideas, but implementing won't be quite as labor intensive. So the only, only reason you bring projects back is you bring new frameworks. New frameworks or, or designing. <laughs> I mean, if we were doing lens, if we decided to do another round of lenses, um, we would have to bring them back. Otherwise. It's Yep. Um, I think it was in the back. I'm sorry, I can't see your name. Chad. Chad. Oh. Um, hi. Um, so I just had a question. I mean, you know, given when you started this project, uh, uh, the dominance of Apple in the tablet space looks so apparent, and, you know, and now we're seeing a tablet space is changing very rapidly. So I was just curious about what, where your thinking was on on how you're going to potentially adapt this for other platforms. And well, I'll just tell you, there was a. Um, even when we when I started came on started at the museum, they they weren't going to do um, mobile at all. It was about um, they the language that was Rails, but they were these 24 inch um, sort of kiosks in front of the object. Kiosks, yeah, basically. and then it was became this is a, people are mobile. People want to walk around. We, we won't take this out into the museum, and so um, and actually the museum white interpretation was beginning to work on an idea of an app and then we just brought it all together and um, so the next step like even like everyone's like so you can use your iPhone there was a conscious decision made by um, education and design that you know we want people to experience the collection at a certain size I mean we zoom in touch I mean it's so beautiful these these images so that was a conscious decision but we already know we already made those portals so that it's that an iPhone or a smartphone can quickly go there The decision to go with, we have an AV integrator, (coughs) Zenus, which has been amazing, and I recommend if you start any project like this, you hire that person on at the very beginning. Because as we were going and design, they were in on the design um, meetings, they could begin to think, they actually, they were the ones who came up, let's switch to a microtile wall. And we're we're the first multi-touch microtile wall anywhere in the country. In fact, the technology's not fully completed yet. We're sort of, I don't know if you want to be that person, but we are. <laughs> and but it's really working well, and it's really exciting. So, but if you get someone on there who knows how to think it out and knows your budget, I mean, it really helps. While they can come back to the team and say, well, what about that, but doing it this way? And I think that really worked well with getting everyone to then think another step. So to answer your question, why you know is I? He was the one who said, do you really want to go with iPad? You know, that he he was all into not being commercial. But um, we thought, we saw so many people in the museum just taking their iPads, elderly, young, and all, and we thought this is a quick way to get people to start looking at our collection a different way, so, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think Sylvia, go ahead. Um, I have tons of questions, but I'll just... Uh, <laughs> I'll Start with one. <laughs> It's a great idea. It feels a little bit like ghettoizing um, the technology and the interaction experience sort of at the beginning. Mm-hmm. And uh, is there a particular reason why it wasn't distributed throughout the museum? Why aren't you afraid that people will not mm-hmm. sort of that will stop there and not? I know that you kind of build the iPad, mm-hmm. but it might not necessarily. So the iPad actually is one way that we're not. I said the same question there, but. Um, 
It, that's a great question. I at first really felt like that. I mean, because as the person who did the content, you know, I feel very, you know, like, oh my god, I can't believe I've been trapped here. But I've actually thought of it more as an exhibition. Exhibition spaces are in their own place. And then I get to change it again. And people buy a ticket, and they go to the exhibition, and then they go to the galleries. And then I started thinking how great curators get to do things in exhibitions. You know, cu our same curators will do something so insane in an exhibition that they would never do in their permanent collection galleries. And it, I mean, just think, think for those people who are in art museums, that we get to break rules there. And then I started really feeling empowered, like, hey, I can break these rules. And I'm, you know, I'm thinking about already the next one, and I'm, I hope to break more rules. And so then, yes. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, some, it, it's, the, the other thing that's important to me is that this is a place that feels safe to work across boundaries. And I don't know that vis visitors are going to perceive it as an exhibition in my mind. Um, because it's, it was an old exhibition space, so that's what they're going to think. And then you can walk to another exhibition, and we have four, we'll have 14 exhibition or rotating spaces in our building. So there's a lot of spaces. Um, and some of the curators, I think, will be open to having technology, probably tablet handheld technology. Yeah, we've already and had then, some exhibitions with... Yeah, and we have it in... So to go back to exhibitions, you know, we have it in exhibitions. Um, but this is just the beginning. We haven't opened yet. Right. So we, it's, I don't want to, I don't want to be like, I'd rather have them hear it from someone else. But, <laughs> but I also think that, um, the space did a really good job of really highlighting the art. And I, when we first talked about it, they would talk a lot about that. And I was like, oh, once there's an interactive, I don't care if my kids aren't going to look at the art. But it's not, I, I'm totally been changed. It is so placed, so designed so well that you actually, after you do it, you do want, you see something, you do want to go look at it closer. And I, I think that the idea is that this is a space to get this tool set, but the idea of this art museum, and you still have this technology device that I don't know if, how many people will use it or not. We're going to see how many, but people want to go through and then experience the art. We made a conscious decision not to take you to the actual object artwork but take you to the gallery and then you have to look around and, and find it and if you know we don't want you completely glued to the technology we want you experiencing the art I mean that's sort of the the director of the museum definitely started with a nervousness like this is a technology what you know and he is now excited about it but also so people just go through and experience the art. So Floyd uh, and then we'll keep going forward. <laughs> uh, one question is when you drag stuff to your iPad do you lose it when you leave it? If it's your iPad, you take it with you. Okay, and is this available <laughs> online somewhere for people who can't get to the museum? Yeah. That's a great Wait. question. The um, app is going to be on iTunes, um, hopefully by the 12th. <laughs> we're on it. We're cleaning it all up this week and submitting it, um, and then um, eventually the. We haven't decided, but we're designing our website so that if we want to put more of the um, content and interpretation there, it'd be available that way. That would be, an, on, especially on our online collection, so that if you went to a collection, you could still see a lot of the work that's been done by education. I mean, that's sort of our future thinking also. Who's next? I can't see. Jason. Um, coincidentally, I'm setting up an appointment with uh, Christy to look at their micro tiles. So oh. A couple oh. Questions. Um, did you, um, you did not buy their content management system? Nope. And what, because it's great, but it's $13,000, so was there a reason why? We made a conscious decision at the very beginning of this project when, um, um, I, if actually when I started in 2010 in March, and that we were going to make sure that we managed, that, that we could redesign any content management system that could work with all of our, there'd be one enterprise throughout the museum. And that's sort of why we didn't do it. Because it looks a lot, what you've done looks a lot like what, they, what their system does. I'm impressed, though you don't necessarily have to buy their system, it sounds like. No. And I'm glad you're the first to do the talks. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> and it's been great because oh. their, um, our, um, our, uh, can you show the question? AV. I did. Um, oh, it's on. Okay. I, I did. It's on. You can do it. Why don't you put it up again? Okay. Our AV um, integrator went and got trained in Christie course in China for a month or what. I mean, like, spent a lot of money. I mean, he's doing this now. He's now using this in, like, all his projects. So he was very excited to um, 
sort of push them like this kit to do the next set for touching wasn't supposed to be ready till January. It's going to be ready in November, mostly because Doug has become best friends with one of the main developers there. So he's very personal. Yeah. Did you develop your content management system yourself? Is it Drupal based or? Yeah, it's not Drupal based. Our um, website we're making um, is open source. The reason and Drupal. Yeah. With the reason we didn't, um, our dam was done um, by Piction. And when we first started realizing that this was going to be very image driven and how we would have to work and we wanted to do it in house, we made a decision to have Piction do the CMS. At the same time, just to get a little secret down the road, is what we're restructuring of how we're going to do Piction in the back end. We're working with them in the future, and so that might change. But we've been, everything we design now is designed in that. Our, four, our, our five year plan on what our system, where we think our systems are going to go. Uh, I think actually yeah. I've been waiting up here. Two, two just questions. Mm -hmm. One, I uh, noticed you're just using uh, mock up images from Gallery One. Will there be labels or will they not? Because I look like I didn't see many labels on the wall. So the being written. Great so. question. Yeah, no, so we, that was, that's a great question. It was something that. Um, involves some intense debate. We decided that we want to be as inclusive as possible, and we want technology to be an option, but not necessary. So there will be labels on the walls. We, um, we've we actually just, because of the timeline and all that kind of stuff, and we're, we're also installing a whole wing of our museum at the cameras. same time. So just for the reason of design and all that, we're producing labels. Actually, they were producing them the other day when I, when I was yesterday. They were producing labels. So there will be labels and there will be content on that. But every object on the iPad, every object has that web text that, um, well, now it's gone. Sorry. But was, <laughs> don't just play. <laughs> it's gently going around and people can ask questions. Um, so yes, yeah, so what's your other question? The other question is on the iPad experience. Uh -huh. uh, if there's video and audio content, Headphones or That's a great question. <laughs> Such a good question. Um, would you like to debate it? Uh, we're probably going to sell um, buds in the store. We're, 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 we, we, uh, we have the visited. So we talked a lot about the committees that do this. After it opens, then a sort of new set of committees join us to the party. And so that includes security, <laughs> facilities, visitor services. They've been involved, like kind of, but now we're all in this firestorm together. And so what we've done a lot of dec decisions is to see what our visitors are doing. We produce the space by seeing what our visitors are doing, and we're going to move forward with the space to see what our visitors are doing. So I don't know what's going to happen. We have a lot of really old visitors. I mean, I'm sorry if you're from Cleveland or old, mm -hmm. um, but that, so we we don't. I don't know. So sound wash <laughs> is not a problem. Uh, yeah. It could. Well, I was, it we could go either way, right? That's what, we've actually had these kind of very funny conversations in meetings where we we're like, they're so old, they're going to play it really loud, or they're so old, they're not going to care that it's being played really loud. Or they won't be the ones using the video. It could go like either way, really. But we um, actually we're going to have them ready to, for the ones we're renting out. We will have ones ready just to give out. We're just going to start with them if it is soon and we're we're just daily going to be watching the galleries and then making a decision visitor service is going to make a decision we're always this whole five weeks is about making decisions on how to go forward not to let things go too far because we're, we thought it we've gone to different museums where they don't have and it seems to work okay but you know if this becomes something that is really filling the galleries that could be a nightmare I will also Wait, say an important part let me sorry, follow yeah uh, it's absolutely right watch what they do quick cautionary tale. So at MIA we started sharing our audio with guys for free online. And in our last big exhibition at 50-50, so 50% 50 of the people would rent the audio to work. 50% of the people were using it on the Wi-Fi with their own devices. Guess where they went looking for headphones? Straight to the audio guy desk. Right, right. We ended up giving lots of free headphones out to people. They lost them, broke them in, costing us on the leg. So in this next exhibition we went to one of the local airlines. Oh. Donate a huge oh, that's a good bread idea. Bread Too bad. Yeah, a big sign on the barrel. That's, that's a very good idea. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Um, I was also going to say the other thing is that we are not an institution that is plagued with millions and millions of visitors. And so there is oftentimes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I do spin in my spare time. Um, but so that we also have, we have good amounts of time where we're not super busy. So that, that adds to our answer. So I think it's Leah. Just two, I'm sorry, I don't want to jeopardize. Yeah. A couple of, so you, you, you talked a couple of times about breaking all these rules. Yes. Something that's not 
really doesn't come naturally to museums. No. So who was your champion? Mm -hmm. How did you, you know, make these concessions? How did you get to read or break these rules and sort of still be friends? And secondly... These are some assumptions you're making. <laughs> <laughs> and then secondly, who was your executive sponsor and how did you fund this? Okay, I'm gonna. I can take the second. Uh, you can take the second one. Okay, yes, you take the second one. Okay, go. Um, I'm just gonna say that what was it's a it's a matter of timing. Sima has been the only person on the really on this project that's been there the whole time from the beginning to now. But um, when I came, there was an interim director. They were hiring a new development person. They were changing around the structure. Um, they hired a new director of IMTS and now my position actually reports to the chief curator because they realized that and this is sort of groundbreaking wow. <laughs> so that um, he and I, Griff Mann really believes that technology and education and curatorial and all need to work together to go into the future so that was kind of I think a jumping off point for us to at least have buy-in and then the director that came in after the interim well we were already running <laughs> he was busy <laughs> and no he and everyone and we have a development new development director who's super behind it who just thinks this is amazing for the museum we just had a lot of sort of sort of mm -hmm. we had the solidness of SEMA who was like pushing it the whole way and then we changed around a lot of things and I think it was just timing that got a lot of this stuff that I think normally would have been hard to do and, and yeah but it's been a lot of I mean it, there, it people are passionate and heated in you know meetings everyone wants but everyone wants it to be great that's what we always go back to it's not because someone's trying to shoot it down so I think that to answer the second part of your question first actually um, our chief curator Griff Mann really wasn't a major champion to this he was an internal champion externally we did have fund funding and so this is the actually the Maltz Family Foundation oh, okay. so they were and they were big champions of this and they are people who work in museums and think about technology and so we had an external champion and an internal champion and I think that helped and so that gave us some amount of budget and of course these projects are very expensive so then we were we had the question about the iPads and the, the, the fact that we're charging for them mm -hmm. you know maybe someday we will underwrite it maybe we'll but like we're just trying to kind of keep it going but um, but you know you're right that it, it costs a lot but that question of should you charge for the app it's been a question because we're all like no it's educate we just want people to start using it but the board is like wait a second charge for the app so we're kind of starting without charging and seeing how, how we yeah. work we but did a lot of research on that actually last last winter there was constant looking for well somebody's got to be it was like a needle in the haystack trying to find some some precedent that was charging a cultural institution and that was charging for it. an app and making money for it they kept wanting me to prove that they could, and I yeah. kept saying, I can't find anything. <laughs> so, I think Josh was... <laughs> Sorry? What? They're a good example of the RMN in Paris. That was, and yeah. that was yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Jo I have a two part Joshua. question. The first one is... You've been so patient. Yeah, yeah, you were like the, one of the first hands on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, related to uh, uh, the cost and the sort of lifespan mm -hmm. of this project, one question is, how did you convince people with decision-making power that here's a really expensive project that maybe in two years we need to do a huge influx of money to to keep it up to date perhaps and then the second question is what does success look like for this and what sort of summative analysis things do you have planned which are two totally different questions okay so let me answer the first one actually the second one first the other sources of funding have been grants and we've been we've had some really generous support from IMLS and we're in the process we um, our IMLS grant supports evaluation so we've been working with Mariana Adams from audience focus and then we're also working with internal evaluators and so I think that the the success so we've, the way that we've measured success are things like building new audiences um, satisfying existing audiences uh, growing our family sector because families are very important to creating future p museum goers and frankly f future donors and so those are the metrics of some of the metrics of success that we've set apart and actually the head of development has gotten I mean that was why once when I was brought on I was told this has to be able to s sustain itself and so we sort of rebuilt an IT team that we can sustain in it we can sustain not just this project but the other big projects we've been working on internally so this is not something that we're throwing 
money and we're getting we that's why another reason we're moving to open source and stuff we're trying to get out these licensing um we have a lot of big i'm sure you guys know the amount of money you spend a year on licensing in your budget so um but our development person um he is actually so forward with thinking he's like this has to be you know you know jumped up in two years three years and he's already behind that getting people so excited about this space that be part of that and so he's also i mean thinking about this strategy committee how we would go forward we've also taken someone on the i team t team to really be dedicated from the, um like a help desk person but from dedicated to this space so that it doesn't feel like anything's ever broken that we're always proactively on top of it that things are being um, screens and lens and iPads are constantly cleaned and updated and also watching what people are doing or what people are having problems with doing. So from the IT side, we put a lot of energy into this has to be sustainable. This can't be something that every year we go and ask for a capital budget. Right. And something that's interesting to go back to evaluation is our visitors said to us, we want everything to be different, right? It's an exhibition, but we want everything to be the same. So we had a lot of people who said to us, I like coming to the museum because I always know that that tapestry is going to be in that room. And of course, we took it out of that room. But, you know, I mean, but they, they expected certain things. So I think that rather than thinking of it as a complete refresh, we've got this great framework sure. that we can build on. And one of the th questions that somebody had um, was that, what's the next step? And one of our next steps is to think about smartphones. And then to t think of it, because that's a lot of people want smartphones. And particularly, we are, and many art museums are probably in a community that has a lot of people who do not, cannot afford iPads. And, you know, lots of studies say that people, you know, many disadvantaged communities do most of their internet searching on phones. So, I mean, so there's things that will feel new that aren't quite, you know, the complete refresh. So, I think Julie, did I see another hand? Julie. I was going to ask about how you success. All right, there you go. Are there other questions? I think there was one other question um, that I saw on Twitter, maybe I'll look again, but about co content. I mean, the thing that is, I mean, the technology, everything could be considered hard or easy, I guess, whichever side you're standing on. A lot of what was really challenging was learning how content and technology could talk together, how technology could make the content happen rather than being technology on its own, how content could bow to make sure that technology could happen, right? Because like you, you, know, you, you have this many degrees and you know so, so much about something and you want everyone to know all of that. And of course, visitors don't want to know all of that. So there, there was all of those challenges about being able to play, you know, to work together. And it, you're right, that it was about learning to work together, fight, and make up, and do it again. And actually, one one thing that like like this is just a sample from the IT side that if we, there are certain times because you're so busy you're off both doing everybody's doing whatever. I mean, mostly this project has been um, education and IT on a daily basis, and then everyone else from the museum who we need help from comes in and um, and, and design also has been a major part of that. But um, like. Uh, they were going to go build all the content for the iPad. We're like, okay, we're going to go fix it and everything. Then we finally get the content, and the first and they're in batches. The first set of content is for the galleries that aren't opening till December, and that was like, wait, what? Like they didn't. No one realized. Like, well, what's the big deal? Because. And we didn't realize, we didn't ask, where, where are you getting content from? We, and when we hit that wall, it was like, oh my god, we should have gone this way to this way, you know, and, and that's where we kind of would learn, okay, now how are we going to solve this, we're going to do. But it is, it was sort of, even when you thought you were in communication, everyone, you know, you're working and then all of a sudden another thing comes up that you just don't know the other area, what they're doing and what we're doing and why it matters. But um, I think it's been, it is, I think it does, you do learn okay, now everybody kind of has an idea about the other systems and how you need to do things. I think we're out of time. Is it 245 we're supposed to end? But I could take a couple more questions. Say it really fast. Only if you say it fast. So what did it come? Jane, you can answer that question. What part of it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's really, it will actually be very... Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> oh. You can't put a price on all the work. Happiness, that's, that's what it cost us. Let's talk about CapEx. I'm going to choose to just spend on capital You're going to talk about okay. Well, the thing, get all the, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to take it from a more, because there was, this project was going on for a while, so money was spent where, oh. when it really, in the last two years, changed completely. We really sort of changed gears and put money on, and it's, so I can speak from sort of that. Um, do we speak from that? No. 
We don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't usually. We, we, have, we don't. In, I mean, I don't think we usually disclose that. But it you could probably look it up. Because it's a museum saying we're taking acquisition funds. No, we did not. No, no, no. no, no. no. I mean, you're taking. <laughs> part of this building expansion project and dedicating it to Yes, I agree. I, I mean, I... I it's, it's huge. It's huge. I agree. <laughs> no, I mean, you're right. I mean, the cost... It, something more than just the dollar I mean, Absolutely. And really, the amount yes, of recent times people have... Um, I mean, from people's jobs that in the last... This last six months especially dedicated to, like, from my team pushing... I mean, everyone's working. I know in education and our team are, are working crazy hour weeks to, like get to the end but no I mean everyone just wants to really make it great I mean no it's but it is resource wise right now to get to the end point is is uh, a lot of hours I but in a, in a, I'll just say capital cost of technology that I mean design always costs a lot and sure. but but the technology we've really kept within a I think you got would be very surprised the reasonable budget the micro tile wall was one of our big like crazy things but we just thought you know what this is going to be so amazing let's yeah. put so we had to take other stuff out of the budget to make that work but I think everyone's really excited about I, it and 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 oh to be clear I mean the cost of digital photography is not cheap for we have a studio in-house so that I know not every institution does and our cameras were bought long before this project so they were so not we were you know if somebody had. this is yeah, yeah we were true. taking a lot of resources we already had a collections management we already had all our collections online so a lot of the things that are still stumbling blocks that you would say well I, there are too many parts we had all the parts it was putting them together and, and then actually, making them clean. We're even having problems like in, internally in IT when we have um, Piction doing back end stuff and certain things. We're like, is this towards that project or this? Like because we're making it all work together, we have to usually figure out which which capital project do we really base this to because it's working for all the systems. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of thinking that way. So we we thought well, it wasn't like this unlimited pot of money. But we, yeah. <laughs> That's and right. I, but it was a huge creative this financing. Was, was a good this, answer. To me, I think everybody on this project um, feels like this was a huge, to be part of this has been like a huge gift, you know. Kudos so, to yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.